Hey guys, Matt here from Rec Brewery. Happy Home Brew Wednesday to you. Well, not quite. It's actually very late on Tuesday night, but we're almost there. I have a late shift I'm working tomorrow, so I'm not going to have really a chance to uh, put anything together tomorrow. So, here we go. Um, just sipping on this here. Um, I was actually at the Home Brew Club tonight. Um, they did a, a big beer competition, but I definitely want to take a part of these. It looked, it was a lot of fun. Um, that's why I have a, a little taster glass here of this, um, because we we had 24 beers, so I made sure to take small samples. It was a big beer competition, so they were all big beers. Uh, I think nine percent was the min minimum. A lot, of, a lot of strong stuff there. So yeah, I didn't want to drink a full pint after all of that. <laughs> it was a good time. So updates for you. <clears throat> First and foremost. The sand. It is almost done. Very, very close to being done. Um, I think I, I pretty much have everything I need now to to, to actually do a brewery a, a brewery day. Um, you know, I got so all the kettles, everything has its fittings in it now. Um, there were there were a couple that were missed last week, so I got them in this week and put them on. Uh, just little things like T fitting here for the. Um, for the probe for the mash tun. Um, I believe I had a, let's see, I needed the fittings for the pumps, so that's on there now. Um, the chiller came in today, actually. Um, the, the guy that comes to the home brew store, he was at the, um, the meeting, so he brought the chiller to me, paid him there, and, and took care of that, so that's done. I had the fittings for it, I got to put on there. Um, got all the hoses put together, got my water meter moved, and uh, test it out today. So let me go ahead and let me just grab this and give you a close up of everything. Made the hoses. I made a nice little uh, sort of caddy for the stand, the uh, pumps. Um, you know, it just you can just pick it up and move it around. I mean, it's you know, it's not fixed to anything. I can I like it because it allowed me to slide it back and forth on the stand as I need it. Um, I. Painted it silver to kind of you know match the stand a little bit. Put some handles on it so I can move it around easily. And uh, so these Riptide pumps now they're much better encased than the um, chugger pumps that I had before. So I don't think I need to do this, but I did it anyway. Um, I, I had a couple of ideas. I was I was either going to put some some flashing around this to kind of shield it from any splashing. But I found this stuff. It's basically, um, I mean, I, you know, this, this this just kind of removes. You know, I can pull this off, pop it back down into the grooves again, and uh, it'll protect it from being splashed. But it, like I said, you know, the motor you can't even see it. It's you can see it from the back, but I made sure that this kind of goes far enough back that it's it covers, so shouldn't have any issues there. But this stuff is actually roofing material. Um, it's actually this here. I think this is actually a piece of it pretty much before I cut it down. So as you can see, it's kind of like it just sits on the top, basically sits on the peak of a roof or something, I believe, or, or some of the easements. Um, so it's a real thick material that's, you know, it's obviously weatherproof if it's normally on a roof. And, um, I just hope that it doesn't, you know, like leak any any of this stuff you know one two I, I don't I don't think it will I mean it's just you know it's essentially a different form of shingle I think but um but yeah I mean it's just the idea is just to protect that oh making you guys dizzy um I did buy this I was going to attempt to do this this is what I did with the other pumps I basically you know I kind of did this around the pump on the old pump but um yeah these pumps are a little bigger, so that's not going to work. So I would have had to bend these to a bit, you know, a wider shape or stack a couple together or something. I may still do that. We'll see. I mean, for now, this works. And uh, the uh, chiller. So what I like about this chiller, it's stainless steel, and the uh, connectors are already on there, um, already welded onto it. So I don't have to have any adapters. I can screw the the quick disconnect straight straight onto there, and I could, if I wanted to, just directly connect the garden hose onto here. Now, I do have the parts here. 
what I'm probably going to do. So I believe this what the way this works is for pump fed you you feed in from the bottom up. So I'll probably stick this here, right? So this is where I'll have my thermometer and then out to the side will come out the wart and then just you know screw on the the wart uh, there we go wart connector there for the quick disconnect that simple and last but not least of course panel nice and mounted up I had the guys do the electrical work here they put the they put the breaker in here last week it was on Thursday so there it is right there the new new breaker GFCI 30 amp dual pole they put the plug in for me and uh, because it's a two-story house they had a hard time trying to run the wire they were gonna run it through the attic but they ended up running it across the top and then we put a piece of molding up there so it hit, hit it real nice they did a great job so I'm really glad they did that it made it definitely look a lot better than I would have done it and there's pride and joy there's the panel working fine um i was messing with the timer before it's nice that i memorized that that's pretty much it i'm not going to really turn anything on i mean you can you know the, there's nothing hooked up to the pump so you know you can see them turn on and off this is temporary i didn't want the holes to be there so i put on a uh, cow's logo but i have one being made for myself with wrecked brewery on there and i'll put that on there um I mean, other than that, yeah, it's been it's been great. You know, I, I'll show you some footage. I, I boiled in here to see what the boil rate would be. One thing I noticed is, um, yeah, 100% way too fast. I knocked it down to 75, and even that was too much. So I'm probably gonna when I when I go to brew the first beer, I'm probably gonna do 65, 70, something like definitely because I want to get the I want to get a, a boil off rate of a gallon, which is similar to what I had on the old setup. I had a, a gallon every hour so that's that's what i'd like to do again anyway the video is way longer than i wanted to be it's probably gonna turn out to be like 20 minutes sorry about that uh I'll trim as best as i can and i will see you guys on the next one hopefully it will be a brew day so cheers have a happy humper wednesday everybody and i'll see you next time take care and just uh testing out the new system I already auto-tuned the hot liquor tank and uh, we moved some stuff around here just to clean up, out, clean up all the kettles. So of course the temperatures aren't, uh, you know, they're not where they were, but I could have it at 150. Actually I had it at 154, did the auto-tune process on it. So it's come down some time now. I've been kind of given a good half hour on each kettle. So you know, I, started, I started here originally, put that alkaline breweries wash that uh, Spike gave me. There it is right there. So I put both packets into four gallons of water and went, cleaned out this kettle, cleaned out the mash tun, and now it's in the boil kettle. That's the brewery wash. Man, I love this stuff. It's probably really expensive compared to PBW and that definitely compared to OxyClean, but look how clear that is. <clears throat> That's the brewery wash. So right now I'm just kind of rinsing the other two. I'm rinsing out the, rinsing the mash tun cabling and everything. Rinsing out all the hoses, you know, rinsing out the, the HLT. This is just clean water now for both of these. Rinsing both of these out real nice. And then when I'm done with that, I'll rinse out the boil kettle. And then after I rinse out the boil kettle, I'm gonna go ahead and test out the boil on it. <clears throat> I was testing out the HLT and I can already tell an improvement. So water I put in there was 80 degrees, and it got up to 154 in 20 minutes. So it's really nice. So prepping for the brew day each day will be will be a breeze. But uh, yeah, so oh, I'm waiting for the new cable to come in. So when Spike sent me these kettles and the elements and, and cables, uh, the, the power cords, the power cord to the HLT isn't long enough because normally, just take a step back to work. Normally that table would be in the corner. I, I wouldn't normally be brewing like this, but I'm just doing this to test everything out. All right guys, some more messing around. So, just got some star sand going through the mash tun and the Herm's oil. 
and I'll be uh, doing the same over there in the HLT just to get it all cleaned up. Boil kettle, testing out the boil now, just to see what we got. So <clears throat> it went from 150 to 200. Um, 15 minutes. Pretty darn fast. That's a lot faster than it was on my old system of propane. So I went ahead and switched it over to manual mode. 100% manual mode. And we'll see how long it takes to get the rest of the way to the boil. You can already kind of see the bubbles forming there around the element. So we'll see how high it gets before uh, boiling. Well, I mean, boiling is normally 212, but it fluctuates a bit based on elevation and whatnot, so I might get a nice rolling boil here pretty soon. We'll see. Okay, looks like 205, 206. That's the magic number. A nice boil going there. I'm just going to keep it at manual mode for a moment and see see how much more we get out of that. Just kind of curious and just learning the system, you know, to figure out where where all my temperatures are going to land. That's pretty good. And I pulled it out again with the with the cords. I pulled it out a little bit because. I mean, the steam is going the other direction, but I'm, I'm all right. I don't have any con condensation around the panel. So, uh, yeah. Worst case, with this lineup, I'll have to do it that way. I'll have to just pull it out. That's okay. And I got some star sand flowing through the HLT now. So, uh, yeah, after we boil for a little bit, I'll go ahead and star sand that guy, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. Success, everything works. Leak test, panel, good for the brew day. Alright guys, last one, I promise. <laughs> so, uh, messing around with the manual mode. This is 75% duty cycle. As we have there, it looks like we're kind of hovering at that 10, 207. Seems like that's where it's pretty much topped off for the full boil. And uh, I got the timer going. We're probably seven minutes in. So I'm going to run this at 75 for an hour and see how much I boil off. I started off with 7.5 gallons, which is kind of it's kind of close to um, what I normally do with for my 6-gallon batches on the, the propane system. So we'll see what this does in an hour. Uh, with the propane system, I boiled off a gallon in an hour. Um, now we'll see with this one, it might be a little bit more, because I think, I think that more boil was probably just a little bit more aggressive than... The propane system is. Hey guys, another day, another test. It's raining out today. But, uh, yeah, I was just messing with the, uh, now that I got those new power cords, I was just messing with uh, placement of the table where I want it to be in relation to the panel. And I kind of wanted to see how the smoke would, or the seam would kind of, you know, work if it's this, this close to the panel. I don't know, it's probably a foot away from the panel. And uh, I've been boiling for almost a half an hour now. And uh, I got it down to 70%. That's the other thing I was messing with, it was boil off rate. When I did it at 75%, I was boiling off a gallon and a half an hour. This seems to be a little bit better, but not quite. So I started off with, uh, what, five and a half? It's now just about down to five, almost down to five. So we'll see what this looks like at 30 minutes. If it gets down to five in 30 minutes, that's a half a gallon for a half an hour. And that'll be right where, right where I want to be. Um, and if this is too much, I can always knock this down to 65. But these are, uh, these are 5,500 watt elements. So going at 100% was insane. <laughs> Boil off will be ridiculous. So there you go, lessons learned. Oh, and uh, check this out. I have a ticket open with spike because I find this to be a little disturbing this uh, this this cord that they gave me the one on the boil kettle oops, get this cord out of the way here the one on the on the uh, boil kettle is fine but this one doesn't click into place I mean it, you know it's it's got a little bit of resistance this is cool but you know if I turn it I, I can pull it out It'll, it'll go back in there without, you know, any issue. But when you turn it, 
unlike the other one, the other one clicks into place. This one, I mean, it, you know, it rocks into a groove and you can't pull it out now. So I guess it's safe. But I don't know, it feels like a bit of a defect. I'll have to see what Spike says about that. But uh, I'm not going to do it now because I'm using it over here, but this one's fine. It, it literally clicks on, clicks off, comes in and out without any issue. This one, yeah, for, for whatever reason, it's not clicking off. And then I have to, like, jiggle a little bit just to get it to come out of there. So I'm not really sure why that is. I kind of thought maybe, well, maybe the pins were bent or something, but no. Nope. I compared them to the other one before I started boiling. They look fine. So that's a strange one.